We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 9 or 11 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. gather with you guys this morning and every Sunday morning, um, and to be able to share this morning's message. Um, yesterday, I have to tell you, yesterday we had an event here. Um, we started this men's ministry uh, this year, and let me tell you, it has not been disappointing. Um, yesterday we had a men's breakfast. It, uh, where are my men? Where are my men? All right. Listen, we want to give a shout out specifically this morning to the dudes who showed up at 6 and 6.30 in the morning yesterday to cook that breakfast. Can we give it a shout out? Yeah. You guys rock. It was a full scene in the cafe, and we're looking forward to doing that again in the new year. So if you didn't get a chance to go to it, mark your calendar when it comes out later on uh, in the new year. Um, you know, another thing that's going on here at ACC, okay, we, if you look around, it's starting to fill up, and this is something that we actually anticipated. We're not even at the second service yet, okay, but it's filling up, and, and some people, it's like, man, it's, it's not as... You know, there's a lot of people here, more and more, and we're going to continue to see that. So what we are doing, if you've not heard, is in a couple weeks, the week after Vision Sunday next week, we are going to be going to three services, okay? So make a plan. Yeah. Um, we're going to have an 8.30, a 10 o'clock, and an 11.30 service, and really want to encourage you to consider that, that first service or that last service, because we know that that middle one's going to be really full, but here's, here's what we're asking. We want to encourage you to go to one, serve at one, okay? And so today, as you leave, as, as the Lord lays it on your heart, go ahead and stop at the Next Steps area. We would love, especially our partners, to find a way to serve here at ACC and help people to be transformed and released by the love of Jesus. Well, you know, today, as Pastor Matt said, we are going to be wrapping up our series, The Blessed Life. And, you know, we've been talking about what the Bible says about giving, but this, as I was preparing this message, it made me think about a story that I had heard of three pastors many years ago. There were three pastors, and they got together, and as they got together, they were talking about giving. And, and one of them said, you know what, um, I actually came up with a new way of giving. And, uh, and the other guys are like, really? And, and he said, yeah, actually, what I've decided to do, what I've started doing is, what I do is I, I take a, some chalk and I, and, I, and I make a circle, okay? And then I take whatever the Lord has blessed me with that week and I throw it up in the air and whatever lands in the circle, that's what I give to God. And the other past, one of the other pastors, he says, man, that's really interesting because I was thinking about this the other day too and, and, and I actually came up with a new way of giving too. I, I also do a circle. I, I, do, I draw a circle and then I, I take whatever God's blessed me with that week and I throw it up in the air as well and whatever lands on the outside of the circle, that's what I give to God. And the third pastor, he was sitting there going, man, this is amazing. Like, Man, the spirit must be really moving here because, like, I, I just came up with a plan more recently, too. I, I actually draw a circle, too. And what I do is I, I take whatever God's blessed me with, and I throw up in the air, and whatever God wants, he can take. <laughs> For a couple of you, you will get that later. <laughs> Listen, here's the thing. Oftentimes, we can come up with different ways of giving, different ideas, uh, but here's the thing. At the end of the day, we want to come to God's Word and say, okay, God, what do you want? What have you actually revealed to us in your Word? Because that's what we truly want to know, and that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to continue to get into God's Word, but before we do that, let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for how much you love us how you sent your son to die for us in our place. 
Father, we ask that you would just download your ideas into our hearts and into our minds. Father, we ask for your amazing grace. I ask for your amazing grace, which I need just as much today as the first day I came to know anything about you and anything about it. Father, I ask that you would help me to speak your word clearly and boldly this morning. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, and everyone said, amen. amen. You know, if, if you've got a Bible, if you can open up to the book of Exodus, we're just going to dive right in here. You know, we just recently went through the wander years, and, and, and we were talking about as Israel had got done wandering and came into the promised land. And you have to understand that there was a lot that was revealed during that time, okay, between Egypt and the promised land. And, and we read in Exodus, one of those things that God was revealing along the way, it says in Exodus 13, 1 through 2, it says, the Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. And so from the get out, God basically says, listen, the firstborn's mine. This, this, is, this is literally mine, okay? And then he, and then he goes on, uh, skipping down to verses 12 and 13. It says, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. Now, I realize, I read that and you're like, all right, what did he just say? What's going on there? So, the first thing I want you to recognize is this. God basically says, the firstborn's mine. That, that belongs to me. And remember, this is an agricultural uh, 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 culture, okay? So, uh, how many shepherds do we have here? Any ranchers? Yeah, me neither, okay? So, so we have to put this in that context and understand that when God is saying, hey, this firstborn is mine, understand that it always requires faith to give the first because ultimately that's what God's saying. He's saying the first is mine. The first is mine. And in this, he says, listen, if there's a firstborn, if it's a firstborn uh, lamb, as it were, it's going to be offered up to the Lord, okay? In this day, they would have brought that lamb to the tabernacle. Eventually, it would have been the temple, okay? If one Sunday you show up here with your lamb for Pastor Matt, he's going to be like, I don't know what to do, man. We'll figure it out. But here's the thing. You also had firstborn sons. Now, understand, they're going into Canaan, and in Canaan, they actually would sacrifice children. And God does something different. He says, no, 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 no. You're going to redeem them. In as much as this donkey, this unclean animal, you're going to redeem it, okay? And redemption ultimately points to, uh, to be in place of, okay? So you're not going to sacrifice the firstborn son, but he is going to be mine, you see, God does some typology, some symbolism, and, and He's pointing the way to Jesus in this, okay? But in the midst of it, He says, you're going you're gonna to take and you're going to give it an offering of a lamb in its place, okay? And the same thing happens with the donkey. Now, it's interesting because this donkey, this donkey is an unclean animal, and God says, you're going to redeem that as well, okay? And again, it's, it's an interesting thing because God is pointing the way because... You're going to offer the clean on behalf of the unclean. Now, does that, does that sound a little familiar? You see, we read of something like this in the book of Romans in the New Testament. In Romans 5, 8, we're told, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, so often we feel like, you know, I've got to get it together. I've got to get everything right. And then when my life is all in order, then I'll come to God. And God says, no, 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 it's just the opposite. While you were still sitting, while we were still sitting, while we were still lost, God said, I'm going to send my son as a big church word, substitutionary atonement, okay, to stand in the place of, to redeem. I'm going to send my son to redeem you. And so ultimately, we find in our first point that Jesus was God's first fruits. 
Jesus was God's first fruits. When we give of our first fruits, and we're going to talk about this, in many ways what we're doing is we are basically connecting with what God was doing. Now, I know that for some of you guys, when we're going through the book of Exodus or Leviticus or anything in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, it can begin to feel like, yeah, but we're not under the law. We're, we're not under the law. You're absolutely right. We're not. But when we talk about first fruits, it's interesting because first fruits is one of those things that actually even predates the law. In fact, actually, when we go to the book of Genesis, okay, Genesis chapter 4, at this point, what's happened is sin has entered the world. Adam and Eve, you know, they, they ate of that fruit of knowledge of good and evil, and they weren't supposed to. And God kicks them out of the Garden of Eden. And why does he kick them out? Because otherwise, they might eat of the fruit of uh, eternal life and be stuck in their sin. But God kicks them out, kicks us out, as it were, for our own redemption, our future redemption. And it says that in the course of time that they had a couple sons, Cain and Abel. Let me read this out of Genesis 4, 3, and 5. It says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. You know, a lot of people over the years have read that story, and they've gone, you know, what was the difference? Was it, was it that God loves, you know, meat? I like to think so. I like to think that He likes a good steak, okay? But that's not what's going on here. It's, it, it, when, when Cain is offering uh, vegetation, okay, some crops, he's doing a little farming, and his brother Abel is, is, is shepherding and, and taking care of animals. It's not a matter of beef uh, compared to lettuce, okay? It, maybe it is amongst you, okay? But, but within this, understand the wording there at the very beginning when it says, in the course of time. Don't miss that. In the course of time. What, what does that mean? That means that basically some crops came in and Cain is sitting there going, man, hey, you know what? Let's have a feast. Let's, let's go ahead and eat. You know, maybe, maybe he had to pay his cell phone bill, his mortgage. You know, he had, to, he had to, to pay for, you know, the YMCA. I don't know what he had to pay for. I don't know what he had to do in that moment. But what it says is what he didn't do. He didn't bring his first fruits. What he did is eventually, after doing all the things that he felt the need to do with that, taking care of his stomach and his family, whatever it was, eventually he got to it. Whereas Abel, Abel it says that he brought an offering, fat portions with some of the firstborn of his flock. And so it was one of those things now, I don't know how they came to know this. We're not told. I don't know if at some point or another, uh, Yahweh shared it with them or Adam and Eve said, hey, this is the proper thing to do. But at some point or another, Abel did the right thing. Abel brought, now, uh, brought the first fruits. He brought the first of the livestock. And, and, and don't miss this. I know that you guys, you know, when you have a steak and you see all that fat, some of you guys love it, but most of the time, I don't know about you guys, especially when you're kids, what do you do? You cut the fat off and you're like, oh, yeah, I don't want to eat that, right? But here's the thing. Leviticus 3.16 actually says the fat belongs to the Lord, okay? The fat belongs to the Lord. There's something in it that God's like, hey, that's the best of the best and I want it. But within this, Abel offers the firstborn of his flock. He offers the first fruits, as it were. And God honors it. Ultimately, uh, Cain gets really upset and um, gets angry, and he does not master it, and Abel ends up dead. But he is actually in the book of Hebrews uh, and basically is honored in the hall of faith, which is amazing. When we go into Leviticus 2730, this is at the very, very end of the book of Leviticus. And Leviticus, the best way to understand it is it's a book that is telling Israel this is how you maintain a right relationship with God and with each other. This is what you do when you fall into sin. This is how you, this is how you honor God. And it says this, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit 
from the trees belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. It is holy. Now, we oftentimes may talk about holiness, but in this context, understand that word holy means to be set apart, set apart for a specific purpose. And ultimately, it's saying, hey, a tie of the land. When you come in to the land that I'm giving you, when you come into the promised land, the first portions are mine is ultimately what God is saying. A tithe of the land, the first fruits of the land. It's going to be important. It's going to be so important that when they come in, and remember, we just talked about the wander years, but here's the thing, you get to the book of Joshua. Moses doesn't get to go into the promised land, but Joshua and Caleb do. And as they bring the children of Israel in there, as the Hebrews come into the promised land, they come to Jericho. And maybe you've heard the story before. They come to Jericho after 40 years of wandering, and they go around and around and around and around, and then they shout really loud, and the walls come tumbling down, right? Or maybe you have a Veggie Tales version in your mind right now. I don't know. But in the midst of it, everything in that first city is a first fruit to the Lord. It's holy to the Lord. They are not to take anything from Jericho whatsoever. The whole city, everything is to be burned to the ground. It's just supposed to be vanquished. It is something that is holy to the Lord. It's given to the Lord. And then they go into the next battle against a place called Ai, A-I, Ai, the ruins, as it can be translated from what I recall. Um, and people die. And they come back and they're like, what happened? We were winning. And then there's what's known as Achan's sin. You see, there was this guy named Achan, and this is what he will for all time be known for, his sin. He takes some of the gold, some of the silver, and he sets it apart. Nobody knows it. He sets it apart. And God says, you have lied to me and you have stolen from me. That's why you lost. That's why you lost, because you have stolen from me, because this was not yours. It was mine. It was set apart. It was holy. I was going with you. Don't worry. You're going to have the rest of the promised land. And so often we can get ahead of ourselves and forget that, listen, we need to put first things first. Can, can, look to your neighbor. Just say, first things first. First things first. We've got to put first things first. And here's what it says in Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. You see, first fruits blesses everything to come. Now, this isn't a health and wealth like, oh man, if I give, I get. We're going to get to that heart issue in a moment. Because that's not what it's about. It's not about giving to get, but it is recognizing that when we give God what is already His, when we bless God with our first fruits, it blesses everything to come. And I truly do believe you can't outgive God. I have seen God bless over and over throughout the years. And let me tell you, when you talk with other people who have given of first fruits over the years, they will always have a story. They will always have a story. Because God does honor it. In as much as, listen, even when you look at the law, okay, yesterday, okay, we had a men's breakfast. Now, in the Old Testament, under the New Testament, can we eat sausage and bacon? In the New Testament, can we eat sausage and bacon? All right, amen. Under the Old Testament law, can you eat sausage and bacon? No, you're not allowed to. I'm so thankful for Jesus. Now, I get more amens from bacon than anything else here. But here's the thing. Does that mean that suddenly all the fat, the gristle, and everything else is good for y'all? No, it doesn't. It means you can eat it, but it doesn't make it better. There are promises within the law, okay? What you won't hear somebody say is, hey, listen. It says, thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal. But that's in the law. Like, like we're under grace. We can totally steal. No, no, that is not how it is. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, and this is point two, you can choose to be blessed or stressed. 
You can choose to be blessed or stressed. There are moments in my own life over the years, you know, my wife and I, we have been tithing throughout our entire marriage before and giving of our first fruits. When before I was married, I didn't know anything about giving. I, like literally nobody had said anything. And as much as nobody ever talked to me about baptism, I just had to hear a sermon on these things and put two and two together or have a friend talk to me at some point. Giving oftentimes is not talked about enough. And so oftentimes we don't understand it. I think of a, a woman who um, I met who she was trying to tithe. She understood that it was a tenth, but she thought that it was a $10 bill. So every week she gave a $10 bill. I'm like, man, I wish you could pay all the bills and, and do all this stuff for $10 a week. That would be fantastic. But she had to understand, and as much as I had to understand what first fruits were. You see, I was walking around, walking with Jesus with holes in my pockets. It just felt like everywhere I went, there were, and, and God blessed, okay? But here's the thing. It says in Exodus 23, 19, bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. When we talk about first fruits, when we talk about giving, what does it look like? Like, what is the first? Like, what do you really mean, God? What do you mean by first? I'm glad you asked that question. It's a great question. Imagine that this week, okay, I, you may have made more, you may have made less, but I like round numbers, okay? Let's just say that you made $1,000 this week, great job, okay? And you've got 10 $100 bills, okay? You've got 10 $100 bills. Now, which one of these $100 bills is the first? Is it the one over here on the left or on the right? Your right, my left, what? Is it the one on the right, the left, or in the center? What, what side is it? It's the first one of those that I pick up and I give to the Lord. It's the first one. And so it's one of those things of putting first things first. And I, listen, I recognize that, you know, I don't know about you guys, when I get a paycheck, I have taxes and everything else taken out. I get that. But here's the thing. What you do is you say, okay, what has the Lord blessed me with from the very beginning? I'm going to take those first fruits. It's a tithe. It's 10%. First fruits. And I'm going I'm to bless the Lord with that, knowing that as I give the Lord what is His, He will bless the rest of it. Now, does that mean that suddenly I'm going to be a millionaire? Gosh, I wish so. But no, it's, it's not a matter of that. But does He bless? Does He take care of? Does He provide in ways that we can't even begin to imagine? Yes, He does bless the rest. He blesses our lives. And honestly, what I found over the years is that this one act also has blessed my marriage. As we talk about our finances, we talk about how to do things responsibly. When I think about first fruits, though, it's interesting because, you know, when we get to the New Testament, we find a couple first fruits things that happen. In fact, actually, in Romans 8.23, it refers to the first fruits of the Spirit. If you have decided, if you, if you have called upon the name of the Lord, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay, you've taken that step of baptism, you're, you're like, I'm all in. Guess what? You have the Spirit of the living God. This is the first fruits of the Spirit. Now, in addition to that, in addition to that, when you go to 1 Corinthians 15, 20, it refers to Jesus as the first fruits of the resurrection, the first fruits of the resurrection. Every Easter, you probably hear the story about how, um, you know, at the Passover, that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Passover, that He is the Passover lamb to come, right? But how often do you hear that the Sunday after Passover, the festival of first fruits begins? And Jesus is the fulfillment of the festival of first fruits. You see, he was resurrected. And what does that mean? That there is a harvest to come. That all those who call upon the name of Jesus, that they will be resurrected at the end as well. When it's the first fruits of the Spirit, we've been given the Spirit of God, but there's more to come. There is so much more to come. And when we talk about these things, it's important because Jesus talks about these things. He talks about giving. In fact, he talks about giving more than grace, more than love, more than any of mercy. He talks about it quite frequently because it is connected to our hearts. He says this in Matthew 6, 19 through 21 in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven 
where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And don't miss this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. Oftentimes, it's really easy when we, when we talk about giving, when we talk about tithing, when we talk about first fruits to go, well, you know, that's for somebody else or something like that. But Jesus makes it really clear. In fact, I like this illustration because I think that Jesus did a really good job at it. I, I brought your heart here today, okay? And I've also brought a treasure. And what he's ultimately saying is this, wherever your treasure is, your heart will follow. It's not a matter of where my heart is, the treasure will come. No, he says, where your treasure is, your heart will follow every single time. It's important to understand this because it's something that Jesus says. And ultimately, it leads to our third point, and that is giving connects our hearts with heaven. It connects our hearts with the purposes of God, the purposes of heaven. Another thing that it also does, it says in Exodus 13, 14, don't miss this, and, and, and I'll explain it in a second, but it says, in days to come, when your sons ask you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You see, First Fruits gives us an opportunity for sharing our testimony. You see, what happens is, imagine that you've come out of Egypt. You're in the promised land now. You're a shepherd. You're a rancher. You've got a bunch of sheep. And your son, your daughter is sitting back and they're watching. They're like, dad works really, really hard every single day. I know that those sheep mean a lot to him. Why does he keep on doing that? And in that moment, we're told, dads, you'll be able to say to your children, he says, as you come into the promised land, let me tell you about a time when we were enslaved in Egypt. We weren't always, I wasn't always a rancher. Things weren't always going like this. It wasn't always good eating. But here's the thing. But God... But God. And in that moment, they're able to share. You're able to share. Listen, God freed me out of bondage, and now I honor God with the first fruits. I honor God with the first fruits of what God has blessed me with, with the first sheep, with the first this, with the first that. And that's the same thing with us. You know, I don't know about you guys, but growing up, I remember. I remember um, growing up in the Catholic Church, and as I grew up in the Catholic Church, we, there would be an offering, and the offering was a little different. We, we don't actually pass buckets or anything like that these days, okay? But you know, back then, there was this basket, and it had a stick on the end. I was always a little fascinated because they'd come through, and man, that stick would just come right through the aisle. You got in the way, you might, boom, get hit in the head or something like that. You know, a lot of kids got woke up over the years, I'm sure. I was probably one of them. But I remember that my dad, he'd have an offering. It's usually a check. I didn't necessarily always get to see what it was or anything like that. But it was kind of like, what are we doing here? Why, Why are we giving, dad? Like, what's going on here? Moms, dads, I want you to know it's important to involve your children. It's important to talk to them about what you're doing, about your faith, about the grace of God, about, listen, this is what I was like before, and God came in, but God came in, and I am no longer the same. I am not the same person today as I was then. For me, I've had to talk to my kids over the years and tell them, you know what, there was a time, there was a time before I knew Jesus. There was a time when I was suicidal. There was a time when I was on drugs. There was a time when I hit the bottom. And the only, the only thing, the only one that I could see when I looked up was God. I found Jesus. It's an opportunity 
to share your testimony, to say, listen, I, I want my heart to be in heaven. I want my heart to be aligned with the heart of the Father. And so this morning, as we come to our what now, God, you know, this is this moment where we talk about what, what would God have us do with all that we've heard this morning. I'm just going to make it really simple. First thing is, put first things first. First things first. Second thing is this. Examine your heart. Examine your heart to see, are your, is your heart aligned with the purposes of God, of what he's wanting to do? Not just in word, but in deed. And the third thing, teach them to your children. Talk to your kids about the faith. Talk to your kids about why you give. Involve them in it. Involve them in it. Because I got to tell you, growing up, there was no greater joy on Sunday morning than being the kid who got to give to the Lord because I knew that it was important to my parents. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We ask that you would help us to put first things first, that you would help us to examine our hearts, and Lord, that you would help us to pass all that you've given us on to the next generation so that they can be blessed. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, and everyone said, amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings at 9 and 11 a.m. Please remember this, you belong at ACC.